Hey, good morning, everyone. It's third. No, it's not Thursday. It's Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, Thursday morning, we might not be here. No, I'm just joking. Uh, Tuesday morning it is, and uh, I don't know about you, but I love waking up in the morning to a new forecast track for this storm and uh, all that it's telling us is going to happen. And so uh, here we are. We're uh, a couple of days away or a day away from a uh, storm rolling through. So um wanted to remind you guys about things here at Lake Eustis. Uh, two things, um, well a couple, actually three things. One is that we are not going to be holding Bible studies uh, here on our campus tomorrow, uh, either in the morning for our morning Bible study or um, or Wednesday night program for youth and students and uh, kids and all that kind of stuff. So no Bible studies here tomorrow. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, I know there is a painting uh, class this Friday night. Um, we'll have to play that by ear. Um, right now, it hopefully will be, in a, from a weather perspective, we'll be okay on Friday night. Um, just have no idea about power issues. So we'll just watch that and see what um, what transpires of that and just be on the lookout for that. So if you're signed up as a lady uh, to come to that painting class, we will notify you if something changes. Right now, plan on doing it, um, but we'll let you know. Uh, other thing we need to let you know is we are willing to let people stay here um, uh, if you are needing a place to stay. We are not a shelter. We can't classify ourselves as a shelter. We don't have provisions for that. Um, but we do have a building and we do have running water. Uh, at least uh, we should continue to have that. And um, if uh, you need to uh, use the building, have access to the building to sleep, uh, you are more than welcome to do that. You just need to notify us. We've got to know. Um, so you need to call the office today. Uh, they're predicting that we'll start getting some bad weather tomorrow. So um, our best idea would be that you need to be in here sometime uh, tomorrow morning or noon tomorrow. So um, we don't have people having to travel around if the weather gets bad to let people in. So please let us know if you're interested in that. Um, we would appreciate that. Um, so if you need the place to stay on those nights, let us know. Uh, the last thing, and that is that coming up, uh, post storm, if, uh, if we have any damage, if we have trees that are problematic, um, we have a group of people that are willing to help do cleanup. And so we've got some chainsaws and we've got, uh, a little bit of muscle and we'll, uh, be willing to help with cleanup if you need that if uh, you know someone that needs it uh, if we can come alongside of people in a system that'd be great again i'll reiterate this we're not doing like raking we're not mowing your yard uh, i'm not going to wash your car at least not this week i'm not going to um, but if you need if you got a limb down on your roof or if you've got some big limbs in your yard or things of that nature let us know if you got if you end up with a hole in your roof let us know we'll see what we can do to help uh, we'll just do whatever we can to be of assistance to you guys. So um, let us know. That'd be good. So we're in John chapter 17, uh, looking at the life of Jesus. This is the night that Jesus was arrested. He's been doing all kind of stuff this night, right? He had the Last Supper with them. He washed the disciples' feet, instituted communion, taught about the Holy Spirit, told him he's leaving and going away, going to come back and get him someday. Um, talks about how he's going to overcome evil, all that kind of stuff. At the end of this time, John Jesus begins to pray. Um, and he begins to pray in their presence. And it's really cool, this prayer. So we're going to actually look at this prayer over the next uh, couple days. Uh, because it's kind of in three different segments. So Jesus prays about himself and his relationship with the Father. Second of all, he prays for the disciples. And then third, he, is he prays for all believers that would come down the road. That means us, which is a cool thing that Jesus would pray for us. Like, he didn't specifically pray for Lake Eustis, I don't think, but he prayed for all those who would believe in him down the road. And so that includes us. So let's just look at this prayer in John chapter 17, verse 1. It says, After Jesus said this, he looked up toward heaven and prayed. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, 
the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. So this is a really cool, um, really cool prayer that Jesus has. So much in this prayer that I think is important to note. He makes some points here that I think are important for our life. First of all, he says the hour has come. Jesus knows that the the whole purpose of him coming to the earth is culminating right now, right? He came to the earth so that he would die for our sins. That is getting ready to culminate at the cross here in the next few hours. I mean, within 12 hours or so, Jesus would be on the cross when, when he was praying these these words. He says, my goal, he says, I, I want to glorify you. That word glorify means to bring praise it means to elevate in stature. Uh, it means to put on a pedestal. Jesus saying, I, I make it my aim to glorify you. That's reflected in another prayer in the garden, um, right? When Jesus prays in Matthew and in Luke's gospel, it's recorded, Jesus prays and he says, Father, not my will, but yours be done. So it was always Jesus' intention to do the will of the Father, bring glory to the Father. He says right here, God, you gave me authority to give eternal life. So it is Jesus's gift to us. Notice that he gives eternal life, not that we deserve eternal life. This is a really important distinction. We don't deserve anything but separation from the Father. It is only by the grace of God and the mercy of God that we are gifted eternal life, that we're gifted salvation, that we're gifted forgiveness. That is a pure gift from God, and it's only Jesus's to give. He's the only one with the qualifications and the credentials to give such a thing. So we have to be reminded that we're given eternal life. Then he says this, he explains what eternal life is, and this is cool. I think this is really neat. Now this, verse 3, this is eternal life, and when I think of eternal life, when I start thinking about like eternal life, that phrase, I think of heaven, I think of, I don't know, I think of uh, clouds in the, in the sky, I think of angels, and I think of uh, this beautiful scenery in heaven, and I think of beautiful clear lakes and great fishing for eternity. That's kind of what I think of. I think most of us, when we think of eternal life, we have some image of heaven that is conjured up. Uh, whether that's streets of gold and pearly gates or whether that's family reunion, wh whatever that is for you, we all have that in our mind. But Jesus says here, he says, now this is eternal life. And then he defines it. Eternal life is that they would know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Jesus is saying that eternal life isn't just really good rewards. Eternal life, the joy that we have is knowing God. Right, this intimate knowledge of God, this relationship that we would have with God. I just think that's so important. And so that tells us that eternal life isn't something that is to come. Eternal life is something that we have right now. That when we put our faith in Jesus and we grow in our knowledge of who God is, we are already beginning eternal life, right? This fellowship and union and oneness with the Father we get to experience right now. Verse 4, Jesus says, I have brought you glory. I've, I've honored you. I've got, brought you glory, God, on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. I just want to wrap up with that. Finishing the work that you called me to do. The work that Jesus was called to do, he completed during his ministry and eventually on the cross. That's the same way we bring glory to God as well. By finishing the work that God has called us to do. The work of being a godly parent, the work of being a honorable spouse, the work of um, being a loyal employee um, in your work environment, uh, of loving your neighbor as yourself. Uh, we bring honor to God by the work that we do, by completing what God has commissioned us to do. And I would say that for all of us as believers, our greatest commission is in, Act, or in Matthew 28, where he says, go make disciples. Have we brought glory to God by making disciples? Have we honored the name of Jesus by our actions and our behaviors in life? That was what Jesus did. It's a model for us as well. So let's pray about that. God, thank you for these truths that we find in the scripture. We thank you for Jesus' words 
his um, just his commands uh, that, that we would that we would be like him the command to, to love one another the command to submit to you God that you've given us a recipe you've given us a blueprint in Jesus of how to honor and glorify you and I pray that we would follow suit in that that God we would surrender completely to you it's in Jesus name we pray amen all right everybody hope you have a great day I uh, hope you guys are safe from the storm. Uh, don't be, um, I was trying to say this nicely, don't be dumb uh, and uh, do things that you shouldn't do in the storm. Be wise, be smart, be considerate to your neighbors, and look for ways to be a blessing to other people. Let us know if you guys need anything, and we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. All right, God bless.